subsets and proper subsets. For two sets A and B, we say that A is a subset of B if every element of A is an element of B. We use a sideways U-shaped symbol with a line under it to represent the subset relation. So this is read as A is a subset of B. Let's look at an example. Let A be the set consisting of one and two and B the set consisting of one, two, and three. The only elements of A are one and two. Since one and two are also elements of B, we see that A is a subset of B. Notice that B is not a subset of A because three is in B, but three is not in A. Another example, let N be the set zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 the set of natural numbers and Z the set dot, 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 negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 the set of integers. Since every natural number is an integer, N is a subset of Z. Another example. By making appropriate identifications, we have the following sequence of inclusions. The set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of integers, which is a subset of the set of rational numbers, which is a subset of the set of real numbers, which is a subset of the set of complex numbers. In general, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. We say that the subset relation is transitive. In this way, we see that we have many other inclusions such as the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of rational numbers, the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of real numbers, and so on. Another example, consider the sets 2z, the set of even integers, dot, 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 negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, dot, 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 and 4z, which are the integer multiples of 4, set of dot, 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 negative 12, negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8, 12, dot, dot, dot. Then 4z is a subset of 2z. Every multiple of 4 is also a multiple of 2. Note that the opposite inclusion is false. That is, 2z is not a subset of 4z. To see this, we just need a single counterexample. A counterexample is an example that is used to show that a statement is false. Well, we have two is in two Z, but two is not in four Z. As another example, consider the sets two Z, again, the set of even integers, dot, 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 negative six, negative four, negative two, zero, two, four, six, dot, 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 and three Z, the integer multiples of three, dot, 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 negative nine, negative six, negative three, zero, three, six, nine, dot, dot, dot. Neither of these sets is a subset of the other. To see that two Z is not a subset of three Z, observe that two is in two Z, whereas two is not in three Z. To see that 3z is not a subset of 2z, observe that 3 is in 3z, whereas 3 is not in 2z. Another example, let A be the set consisting of x and B the set consisting of xx. As we already know, these two sets are equal. Listing an element of a set more than once is equivalent to listing that element just once. When two sets are equal, they are subsets of each other. That is, if x equals y, then x is a subset of y and y is a subset of x. Conversely, if x is a subset of y and y is a subset of x, then x is equal to y. So in this case, we have a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a because they're equal to each other. The statement x equals y if and only if x is a subset of y and y is a subset of x has a special name. It's known as the axiom of extensionality. Let's try an exercise. 
for each pair of sets A and B below, determine if A is a subset of B, B is a subset of A, both or neither. Now's a good time to pause the video, try these problems yourself, then resume the video to check your answers with mine. Okay, first one, A is the set XYZ, B is the set XZ. In this case, B is a subset of A, right? X and Z are both in A. The second one, A is 2Z, the set of even integers, and B is N. This one is neither. For example, negative 2 is in A but not B, and 1 is in B but not A. For the third one, A is the set consisting of X and the set of XX. B is the set consisting of set X, X, and X. This one is both. In fact, these two sets are equal. They both can be reduced to the set consisting of X and set X. Four, A equals three Z, the set of integer multiples of three, and B is the set of T and Z such that T is equal to zero, three, six, nine, dot, dot, dot. So B is the natural number multiples of three. B here is a subset of A. A Venn diagram gives a visual representation of relationships among sets. For the Venn diagram in front of us here, we have a nice visual representation of A being a subset of B. Notice how the circle representing A, the darker circle, is inside the lighter circle representing B. We generally put a Venn diagram inside another figure. In this case, I used a rectangle which represents a universal set. So the U here stands for universal set. The universal set is just some set which contains all the elements of all the sets under consideration. It may contain more things. It may not contain more things. In one sense, it's arbitrary. It's up to you what you want the universal set to be. Uh, but usually we try to pick it to be something somewhat natural. As an example, we could let U, our universal set, be the set of all species of animals. If we let A be the set of species of cats and we let B be the set of species of mammals, then we have A a subset of B a subset of U. And we see that this Venn diagram here gives us a visual representation of this situation. Uh, note that every cat is a mammal and every mammal is an animal. Okay, so we chose here for the universal set U to be the set of all species of animals. Uh, we could have chose other things as well, as long as it included all the species of mammals. For two sets A and B, we say that A is a proper subset of B if A is a subset of B, but A is not equal to B. We use the sideways U-shaped symbol without a line under it for a proper subset. So this is read A is a proper subset of B. And I should just note that some authors like to use the subset symbol with a little slash mark through the line under the sideways U to really emphasize that we're not including the set itself. Let's look at a couple of examples. The set of natural numbers is a proper subset of the set of integers because it's a subset of the set of integers, but not equal to the set of integers. On the other hand, the set of natural numbers is not a proper subset of itself, although it is a subset of itself. Subset fact one, every set is a subset of itself. Subset fact two, the empty set is a subset of every set. And subset fact three, the subset relation is transitive. Once again, in other words, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. Here's a, a nice Venn diagram showing what transitivity looks like. Here we have A, a subset of B, a subset of C. Notice that in this picture, if we kind of ignore B in the middle, we see that A is a subset of C as well. The darker circle representing A is fully contained in the lighter circle representing C. Since 
subset is transitive, we can write things like A is subset of B, a subset of C, subset of D. And without explicitly saying it, we know that A is a subset of C, A is a subset of D, and B is a subset of D as well. Let's look at an example. N is a subset of Z, is a subset of Q, is a subset of R, is a subset of C. We've seen this earlier. Since the subset relation is transitive, we automatically know that N is a subset of Q, N is a subset of R, N is a subset of C, Z is a subset of R, Z is a subset of C, and Q is a subset of C. Example, let C be the set consisting of A, B, and C, D the set consisting of A and C, E the set consisting of B and C, F the set consisting of B and D, and G the empty set. Then D is a subset of C and E is a subset of C. Also, since the empty set is a subset of every set, we have G a subset of C, G a subset of D, G a subset of E, G a subset of F, and G a subset of G itself. Every set is a subset of itself. And so C is a subset of C, D is a subset of D, E is a subset of E, and F is a subset of F. And of course we also have G a subset of G, but we already said that. One more exercise. Draw a Venn diagram displaying the sets C, D, E, and F from the previous example inside a universal set U. Go ahead and pause the video, try and draw your own Venn diagram and then resume the video to compare it to mine. Okay, here we have a Venn diagram representing this situation. Notice that in this Venn diagram, D and E are both subsets of C. There is some overlap between D and E. They do have little c in common, so I made sure that they overlap. There's also some overlap between E and F. They have b in common, little b, which is inside the set C, so the overlap is inside the set C there. And there's a little piece of F that's outside of C because F is not a subset of C. We could make this Venn diagram a little more detailed by throwing the elements in as well, like this. Notice that we have A, B, and C inside the set capital C. We have little a and C inside capital D. We have B and C inside E, and we have B and D inside F. And notice that little d is not inside the set C. For the universal set, I chose to throw in a few more letters, E, F, and G. So the whole universal set consists of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Uh, this choice of throwing in E, F, and G was very arbitrary. There are lots of different ways that you can choose the universal set. 